Coming up, a hit and run at the skate ramp. Can our sleuths on the scene track down the offender? And... Ah! A shocking crime with a surprise culprit. Someone's leaking secrets in the mayor's office. And Liam and Brad are on the case. And the mysterious ransacked bedroom. Can Paige pin down the perpetrator? Hello and welcome to the show where kids solve crimes just like real detectives. Yep, and first up, Brad's mum is running for mayor and there's some dirty work afoot in her office. Liam and Brad want to find out who's been leaking some very important secrets. My mum's running for mayor, but now her chances of being re-elected are doomed. Someone's been leaking her election plans. And Liam and I suspect they've planted a listening device in her office. So we're going to try and find it. That's weird. Mum always leaves her pen in the holder, never here on the desk. OK, if someone was bugging this office, they'd need a microphone and some sort of radio transmitter. That's it, Liam. Your trusty radio. And those headphones? The perfect makings of a bug-finding device. I'll just plug in the headphones. Then we'll start sweeping the room. With any luck, we'll pick up radio interference from the bug. If I hear the static noise change, I'll know the bug is nearby. Whoa! There, on the desk. Try Mum's pen, Liam. Quick, open it up. Bingo! A tiny microphone. So that's how the secrets have been getting out. Good work. Now to catch the spy. Ancient Egyptians used codes to stop people discovering their secrets. They wrote with characters called hieroglyphics, then made tiny changes to the characters so no one could decipher them. There's just one way this bug could have been planted in Mum's office. An inside job. And only two people have a key. Mum's campaign manager, Stephen, and her tea lady, Samantha. So they're our two suspects. And to find out who's the guilty one, we're gonna set a trap. I'll dunk the bug in water. That'll stop it working. And whoever's listening in will come to investigate. And we'll use this webcam to watch what happens. We're not allowed to spy on people. But we can watch the desk. And we'll do it all from the office across the corridor. Cool. Clear as a bell. All we have to do is wait for something to happen to that pen. Bugs are sometimes planted in office buildings so criminals can steal industrial secrets. Very sensitive places, like company boardrooms, are often swept to make sure there are no illegal listening devices. A sensing wand is waved over places where bugs might be hidden, like behind whiteboards or in telephones. If the device senses radio waves, it sounds an alarm. Often criminals choose unlikely places to hide bugs, like this whiteboard duster. The microphone and battery found here could transmit secret information for months without anyone knowing. Whoa, these surveillance bugs are tiny. Ah. You could hide one anywhere, even in a bunch of flowers. Or in a telephone and listen to everything someone is saying. Yes, and that's why it's against the law to use bugs like these. If criminals are caught doing it, they can be in big trouble. Uh, and I think someone's going to be in big trouble over at Brad's mum's office. If the boys can find the guilty party, that is. Let's head back to the office and join the hunt, shall we? 
Liam and I found a bug hidden in a pen in Mum's office. And we suspect that someone is Stephen, Mum's campaign manager, or Samantha, the tea lady. Someone's coming already. It's Stephen. He's going into Mum's office. Keep an eye on the desk. No, it's just some files. I guess it wasn't Stephen after all. So that's him off the suspect list. Leaving just Samantha. Surely not. Ooh, must be tea time. Quiet. Keep watching the pen. Trap worked. I think that's case closed. Samantha the tea lady is really Samantha the spy. Nice work, boys. Brad's mum's election secrets are safe once more. Electronic surveillance is one of the most useful tools in crime solving. Security cameras and CCTV are installed in millions of locations around the world. And if you know where to look, you can solve a lot of crimes just by observing. Samantha planted the bug in Brad's mum's office so she could sell secret info to mum's political rival. But when Brad dipped the bug in water, Samantha came to check if there was a fault and fell straight into his trap. Mum wasted no time firing Samantha. So I'm training up to take her place. Are my tea making skills up to scratch? I'll take that as a no. <laughs> <laughs> Better stick to detective work, I think, guys. Now, fancy setting up a high-tech trap for Samantha's high-tech eavesdropping. Those two guys really rock. Hey, that reminds me, things are really rocking over at Paige's house. I mean, really rocking. Good grief. Those twins are so noisy. I'm going to escape to the safety of my bedroom before I go deaf. What? My room's been trashed. Oh, you poor little things. Who could have done this? Of course, the twins. OK, you two. Which one of you messed up my room? Typical. They're blaming each other. And now they're blaming our big sister, Marcy. I'll have to get to the bottom of this malicious crime. I'm going to need my trusty crime-solving kit and my magnifying glass. Thousands of years ago, magnifying glasses were made from clear gemstones. The curved gems bent light just like modern glass lenses do. Perfect for making distant objects look bigger. The likely suspects in the case in my trashed bedroom are Kate, Emma, and I suppose I shouldn't rule out our big sister Marcy. Tweezers, gloves, magnifying glass, and evidence bags. Right. I'll search the crime scene and look for clues. Hmm. Weird. A splodge of strawberry jam. I'll scoop it up and put it in a bag. It's vital evidence. Because I know Marcy is allergic to strawberries. So she's off the suspect list. That leaves Kate or Emma. 
One of them left the sticky evidence behind when they trashed my room. But which one? Oh, poor Paige. She's had a messy old crime to deal with and a very messy room to clean up afterwards. Yeah, it looks like a bulldozer's been through the place. And both of those mischievous twins are perfectly capable of messing up that bedroom in five minutes flat. Mm, and it certainly is a puzzling case. But the good news is Paige is on the right track. So already she's found the blob of strawberry jam and yeah. eliminated one suspect, and that's her big sister, Marcy. Hey, but I don't think it's going to be easy deciding which of the twins is the mystery bedroom ransacker. Well, one thing's for sure. A super sleuth never just relies on the one piece of evidence. They keep searching until they find the right clue that leads them straight to the culprit. Well, let's head back to the crime scene and see what Paige can come up with. The crime? A trash bedroom. The suspects? Two notoriously destructive twins. They blamed each other. But I'm going to let forensic evidence be the decider. Whoa! There's something I didn't spot before. Some blue fabric. This requires a closer inspection. Hmm. It's blue cotton. And it could be from a T-shirt. Hey, wait a minute. Kate was wearing a blue T-shirt earlier today. I better take a closer look at it. Kate, hand over your T-shirt. Now we'll get to the bottom of this once and for all. Thank you. Sure enough, there's a tear in the shirt. She seems guilty. And I'll have proof if this shred of fabric fits the hole. It sure does. So Kate is the culprit. <laughs> nice work, Paige. She showed us how it's possible to match fragments to torn cloth. The professionals call it a jigsaw fit. It proved Kate was the guilty twin. She was busy trashing Paige's room. And when she heard Paige coming, she tore her shirt on the door frame. Well, I solved that crime by fitting the ripped cloth to the hole in Kate's T-shirt. Just like the punishment should fit the crime. Keep cleaning, Kate. <laughs> Phew, tennis makes you so thirsty. I need a drink. Man, it's a hit and run. And our drinks are the casualties. And look, they've vandalised the bench. There's an enormous scrape along the edge. Hmm, yellow paint. That might be a clue. Come on, Kenya. This is officially a crime scene. I'll get the evidence kit. Let's get to it. Now I'll take a closer look at that scrape. Aha! Uh -huh. A splinter of wood with a chip of that yellow paint. That's our first clue. And it looks like Kenya's found another one. Two suspicious looking tracks in the mud. Uh-huh. I think I know where we might be able to find some suspects. Did you know that many ancient paint colours were made from tiny animals? Red from red-coloured insects in South America. And purple paint from the shells of large sea snails. <sighs> I reckon one of these three skaters damaged the bench. And they did it by sliding along it on their skateboards. But who was it? Dean? Jack? Or Brandon? We need to distract them while I sneak in and take a sample from their skateboards. I know. Hey, boys. Can 
Junior's got fresh donuts. Too easy. Now I'll get a chip of paint off Jack's board. Another one from Dean's board. And finally, Brandon's board. OK, Kenya. Let's go check out the results. See ya, suckers. Forensic detectives use chips of paint to help them solve many different crimes. That's because paint contains lots of clues. Look closely at this one. You can see tiny little holes in the surface layer. There are also two layers of different coloured paint underneath. That information helps detectives work out that this paint chip has come from an iron fence at a crime scene. Like a fingerprint, every paint chip is unique. Machines like this one reveal tiny colour differences that allow investigators to match a chip of paint to the scene of a crime. Who'd have thought paint could be so important in solving crimes? Mm, not me, but then again, I think Laura May and Kenya are way ahead of us on the paint chip clue. <laughs> I think you're right about that. And I don't think we've seen the last of those muddy wheel tracks either. They might just be the extra evidence that Laura May and Kenya need. Yeah, but I wonder how they'll link the tracks to the suspect. Well, Shane, I don't think we've got long before we find out. Let's get back to the skate park to see what's happening. Kenya and I suspect that one of the skaters did a slide against the park bench. They damaged it and knocked over our drinks. But we're on the case. <laughs> OK, I'm going to compare the paint splinter that I got from the damaged bench with a sample from the boards of our suspects. Dean, Jack and Brandon. Dean's sample first. Hmm, <laughs> that's not a match. His board was plastic. So Dean's definitely not guilty. Now let's check Jack's. That's a match. He's definitely a suspect. Better check Brandon's just in case. Whoa! It matches too. So Brandon and Jack are still on our suspect list. Hmm, how are we going to narrow this down? Maybe we should revisit those muddy wheel tracks. OK, we'll take some measurements. Then we can match them up to Jack and Brandon's skateboards. Hey guys, want to win another donut? Come and try your off-road skills. Whoever gets through this mud patch wins. Brandon first. <laughs> he got stuck. Now Jack. He makes it through. Just the evidence we need. Hey, Brandon's wheels are too wide. But Jack's are a perfect match. Yep, there's no doubt about it. Brandon's in the clear. The hit and run skateboarder is Jack. <laughs> Good detective work, girls. Paint chips left at the scene of a crime can be a good way to catch criminals, especially in cases of hit-and-run accidents. Unfortunately, Brandon and Jack both had yellow skateboards, but their wheels were different widths. So the girls caught Jack thanks to the wheel track he made just before he did that slide along the bench. I think we've earned some of these donuts ourselves. What? Another smash and grab raid? Something tells me that this crime will be much easier to solve. <laughs> oh, well done, Laura May and Kenya. It just goes to show what you can do with good evidence and smart thinking. I only hope Charlotte and Otto have as much success with the shocking crime at their house. Ah! A headless body! 
Tom's favourite gnome has been decapitated. What a gruesome crime! We need to secure the area. Otto, get the tape. Poor Nomi needs urgent medical attention. Hang on. On second thought, better make a chalk outline. That'll help us remember how Nomi was lying. Well done, Otto. Now no one can come in and spoil the evidence. Let's see if we can figure out what happened. See how Nomi fell? He was standing here, fell backwards, and then got his head smashed. Hmm. I think someone or something has knocked him over. Prince would tell us. But it's concrete, so there aren't any. Or are there? Oops, better put it back. It could be a vital clue. Come on, we're gonna need more chalk. Did you know that leaves look green because they contain molecules called chlorophyll? Chlorophyll absorbs every colour except green, which it reflects. So our eyes see green when we look at leaves. We'll draw a chalk outline around each leaf. Then give it a number. Now each leaf will go into its evidence bag. When we come back, we can put them in exactly the same position. Come on, off to the crime lab. First we'll put the bags under some heavy books and cover them with a blanket to keep them dark. Tomorrow, hopefully, all will be revealed and the case of the headless gnome will be solved. Oh, this is a pretty grisly crime, Steve. What do you reckon? I reckon it's not often you see a garden gnome decapitated in your own driveway. Oh, the poor little fella. Look at him, so helpless. <laughs> and we can't figure out who did it. Now, Charlotte and Otto don't even have a suspect yet. That's very true. But they certainly seem to know what they're doing. Mm. Hey, I want to know what sort of evidence they're going to get from these leaves, don't you? Yeah, I'm not too sure about that because they just look mm. like ordinary garden leaves to me. Nothing special. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you could be right. But I'm really curious about why they put them under that massive pile of books. Hmm. Yep, can't work that one out either. <laughs> Let's head back to Charlotte and Otto's crime lab and find out, shall we? When Nomi got whacked, we got serious. But who did it? Otto and I have collected all the evidence. Hopefully that'll tell us. to check on those leaves. Have we got prints? We sure do. There's a pattern on the leaf. It must have been left by whatever hit Nomi. Let's get back to the crime scene. All the leaves go exactly where they were. Aha! A clear path of parallel lines that lead straight to Nomi in one direction and in the other direction, straight to... Dad's car! Who'd have thought a crime could be solved by looking at the imprints in leaves? But that's exactly what Charlotte and Otto have done. When a leaf is stepped on or run over, cells inside are broken. But you can't see the broken cells until you stop them growing, which is what happened when Charlotte and Otto squeezed them in their leaf press. Once our clever detectives showed the tyre track imprints in the leaves, Dad's crime was plain to see. He reversed into poor Nomi when he was arriving home from work. Nomi's as good as new, thanks to Mum's tender loving care. Something I don't think Dad 
that'll be getting for a while. <laughs> Oh dear, poor Dad. I don't think he's going to get away with that one. Definitely not. But nobody gets away with very much at all when you have clever detectives like ours on the case. And we'll have more intrepid investigators on the case next time. Bye. Bye.